In today's Vectoral video, we're going to demonstrate how to unblock a cat that has feline urethral obstruction. This is a common emergency that you're going to see in general practice or even an emergency, and it's important to be able to know how to unblock a cat atraumatically and quickly. The first important thing is to remember to be set up. Make sure you have the IV catheter placed, you've started a cat on IV fluids, you have sterile gloves ready, sterile lubrication, multiple types of urinary catheters, including open or closed-end Tomcats, Slippery Sam, red rubber catheters, or even olive tips. Personally, I prefer to use a closed-ended Tomcat followed by a five French red rubber catheter. When it comes to sedation for the feline urethral obstruction, pick a sedative that you feel comfortable with. This is gonna depend on the stability of the cat. In the rare feline urethral obstruction cat that's critically ill and comatose or obtunded, no sedation is necessary. But the majority of cases do need sedatives. My typical go-to drugs for sedation for unblocking cats include four milligrams of butorphanol per cat, 10 milligrams of ketamine per cat, 2.5 milligrams of diazepam per cat, and occasionally I'll top it off with 10 to 20 mg of propofol total per cat. We have an assistant helping us, placing this cat in dorsal recumbency, and in this first technique, an open Tomcat catheter is used. You can see a 1cc syringe is being used to help with hydropulsion, and ultimately, this is clinician preference. I often will use a 20cc to 60cc syringe attached to an extension set to help me flush the urinary catheter. In this technique, we're demonstrating with a closed-end Tomcat catheter, and again, using a syringe with saline to help flush. The most important thing is when you're unblocking a cat, you have to be able to extrude the penis and hold on to the prepuce. So typically, I'll use my non-dominant hand, use my thumb and index finger, and be able to exert pressure so I can extrude the penis from the prepuce. Then I'll introduce the Tomcat catheter into the urethra approximately half to maybe three quarters of an inch so that the holes of the urinary catheter are no longer visible. Once I've secured my catheter in place in the tip of the penis, I'll actually pinch the prepucial skin gently between my thumb and forefinger and pull the prepuce caudally and ventrally while I'm advancing the catheter and flushing. Remember, you have to apply a decent amount of traction to the prepuce because this is the pressure that helps straighten the flexure in the cat's penis and permits the catheter to pass over the ischial arch. Once we flushed with the Tomcat, I'll actually aggressively flush as I'm pulling the Tomcat out to make sure that I flushed all that grit or crystal or mucoid debris back into the bladder. I'll then advance a three and a half French or a five French red rubber catheter with a syringe attached so I can flush as I'm going in. The one mistake I see is people flushing excessively while the cat is just starting to wake up. Once you get the red rubber catheter in place, make sure to secure it in place with a Chinese finger trap. This is important to do while the cat is sedate. So again, suture it in immediately once you find that it's in the proper location. You can use two techniques to see if your catheter is in the appropriate location. I literally will just use the wrapper from the red rubber catheter to basically pre-measure outside on the body and make sure that the urinary catheter is seated in an appropriate location. Some people will use the technique where they'll palpate the bladder until um, urine's coming out of the red rubber catheter. And some people will verify with radiographs to evaluate if the urinary catheter is too deep. Remember, we never want the urinary catheter curling up on itself like you can see in this video here. Another important technique that we can often offer our clients is to do an ultrasound. It's very, very quick. It's a great way of evaluating for the presence of stones, crystals, or debris within the bladder. And it's a very easy way for us to be able to correct the catheter depth as needed. When in doubt, these are patients that need to be on aggressive IV fluids to help treat their post-obstructive diuresis, potential electrolyte monitoring, pain control or analgesia, and symptomatic supportive care. And thankfully, most of these patients do well.